I have yeah. a question, guys. I have a question for everybody here. I just purchased at the uh, 7300 there, and uh, the wire, the um, power supply, okay, uh, the wires connect to the power supply, of course, to the radio, but on the on the uh, wires, uh, on the ground and on a positive, I have two 25 amp fuses. Now, what is that, what, what will that protect? The over two fuses are, over two current, fuses are for grounding the, on auto. That's for oh. automotive, the two fuses, so that if you lose a bonding strap on your engine to your ground in, the, in an automobile, you go like that, it stops that starter from going through your radio and drawing air, because that's why they fuse the neutral side or the ground side of it. That's yeah, but that's this, this is not on in, the, in, the, in the car. This is in the house from the power supply. Well, in a house, you would only need the one fuse. That's the you way the power cords are made. You know, the, both sides are fused. Okay. And that's just, an, that's just overcurrent protection, you know, between the radio and the power supply, basically. So yeah. when I connect the, uh, my uh, 73 to the power supply, uh, do I need these, uh, these fuses? You need a fuse, at least. What on, the, on, on the positive? Uh, positive you uh, you definitely need the positive, but you should leave them both on because that's yeah. the way the cables are made. But they're made yeah. specifically that in case you use that 7300 in a mobile uh, operation. And that protects it, like I say, if you use the engine grounding, okay, like that, your starter will then actually try to work through your radio. And I don't think it would like the 400 amp surge that's gonna go through that really on a 7300. So that would blow that ground fuse, the neutral or neutral fuse, ground fuse, whatever you want, okay? And that will take care of that one. So that protects that radio on both scenarios. And that's why the cables are made like that. Okay. You don't want the back EMF of that starter uh, going across your radio either. Yeah. Unfortunately, you... the basic principle of a fuse, no matter what it's rating, is that it takes 100% overload for it to blow quickly. And by that time, whatever it's trying to protect it's damaged, 25 done. amps, the 50 yeah, yeah. amps is already gone through. Yeah. But those fuses are usually like an instrument. If you buy two, there's two different types of fuses, Bob. You buy an instrument fuse, they'll go very, very quickly. And they go out like that, actually almost to the pain in the ass blow out. Okay, that because that's how quick they go. When they, they actually see that bump, and as soon as they see 30% rise, boom, they're gone. I if think that's regular, what I have on the radio. They're a little, yeah. uh, the little bus fuses or instrument fuses. Yeah, but there'll be an instrument fuse. If you buy just a regular fuse, go down to home hardware and go, okay, I'll get one of those and put them in, like an SA fuse. Put it in like that. As Bob says, it takes 100% overload, and it takes, I don't know, 30 nanoseconds or something like that in order to even see that you've got an issue. <laughs> so <laughs> you can actually do damage before it actually blows, eh? Hi, Chris. You know, the fuse is expensive. We've got a fluke heater that blew the instrument fuses inside. And when you go to buy a set of those things, it's like 25 bucks for two little tiny fuses. But yeah. that's what fluke wants, right? So I guess it's just more protection. Uh, Al, I got a question. Using the red and uh, black connection to your power supply, Claude? Yeah. Okay. So you don't have a power supply that Basically, the wire comes out. It's not a matching ICOM power supply or something that plugs. No, it. no, it's, it's a uh, Astron or something like that, or a Linko or Jetstream. Uh, well, no, the power supply is the one that uh, Rusty sold me there. The um, oh yeah, um, linear. It's an Astron, like a twenty-five oh. amp. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Rusty, Rusty sold you that. Look out, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Oh. So, yeah, so the fuses, leave them in line. Leave them in line on both the red and the black. Okay. No, it's because I was going to cut the wire. I don't want to. I don't oh, need like no, that. No. Leave the fuses. Yeah. Al, I have okay. a question. Yeah, go ahead. Call uh, I got a question about these lightning arresters. Uh, this is something new to me. Um, so, is this something you attach to the coax outside the shack as my shack is in the house so it would be outside the house uh, and the second question is um, so if you have these lightning arrestors you still on when the lightning storm comes you still unplug all your rigs I do uh, because you know I mean we don't at the repeater site because I'm yeah. not at the repeater site so those 
antennas stay connected to the repeaters 24 seven, right? So ideally if the lightning comes down or it's not so much if you get a direct lightning hit to the dipole on the side of the tower and it comes down the heliax, my repeater is poof, it's blown. It doesn't matter what the hell you do, what you've got grounded. If you get a direct lightning hit, I don't care what happens, you've lost your equipment, all right? What this does is that the tower, 500 foot tower gets over 100 lightning hits a month up there, wow. believe it or not. Now they're not very big, but they're, and the CBC, if you were to look at the way they've got the grounding at each leg, like uh, Vic was showing you with Steve's tower, the commercial stuff, they've got huge grounding rods and they've got things that go out around the, to uh, the tower because it gets hit with lightning or static buildup. And that's how you get the crackling. If you don't ground your uh, system properly and it's got to be a, a definite ground the same grounding and if anybody's ever been up to the CB site CBC site you'll notice there's a two inch or three inch copper strapping that goes all around the building and we've got an extension of that copper strapping that comes up to the repeater and we have a grounding bus and everything in that tower Okay, the power supply, the duplexers, the, um, uh, the repeater itself, all the connecting cables, the uh, controller, uh, everything that makes the repeater is all grounded to a grounding bus. And that is all, plus the antenna Heliax that comes down has one of those polyphaser antennas that are grounded to the same potential ground. So everything is grounded the same. So you don't get one of what we call these grounding loops, which make noise within the uh, system. So to answer your question, Colin, what that polyphaser actually does, if you get a direct lightning hit, it may dissipate some of that lightning that goes into your radio. Dumps it to ground. Yeah, it may take it to ground, but chances are you're going to blow something. So you need to do it. What it will do is if you turn on your HF rig and you hear that, you know, that crackling noise, sometimes it will reduce that crackling because what it does is it discharges out of your dipole or your uh, tri-bander or whatever type of antenna you have. What it does is it, it takes all the discharge out of that and takes it to ground so you don't... What they, what they do up at the CBC, they... Uh, um, the heliax that runs all the way to the top, basically, they peel the outer jacket back and it's bonded to the tower at the top of the tower. At the bottom of the tower, it's, they peel it back and it's bonded to the tower down there. And then where it comes into the building at the ingress, it's, they peel the jacket back and it's bonded to ground right there. Ideally, you wanna make all the bad stuff happen outside of your house. You know, like, uh, so yeah, your uh, polyphasers or whatever they should be before it comes into the shack. Okay, yeah. I have a question now. What rating should you be getting for uh, amateur radio? Let's say for the polyphasers, to... I guess yeah. it would depend on how much power you're running. Like, if you've got a, if you've got a linear amp, if you've yeah. got a linear amplifier, you know, you need one a thousand, fifteen hundred watts or whatever. Yeah, if I can just add, the elements are rated by power. And the basic power is like 200, 300 watts. And the, uh, then you can get for a kilowatt and higher, I think up to what, 1,000, 2,000 even. So you can replace it. And I'd like to point out what I did earlier. On the back, on the, on the one side of this poly, of this uh, alpha delta, there's a threaded hole in the, in the body of it that you have to attach to the ground. You have to make sure there's a really good uh, ground strap that goes to each of these to help you get rid of the charge otherwise it doesn't have any place to go you're right. not you're yeah it's yeah it, i have it, it, i have some copper ground plates that attach to the copper pipe ground and then you mount those polyphasers on that copper plate with your coax running through them 
But it's like you just run a bolt through the back of it. Is that what you're doing? Like, is that threaded, that hole? Yes, it's yeah. a threaded hole, and, and it comes with uh, the, uh, the the bolt that uh, you screw into it. Okay, okay. And the Are you running an Alpha be... Delta? Pardon Al? me? Excuse me? Al there runs an Alpha Delta antennas? Who, what's that? I'm sorry, the question? I you be, run I'll the be Alpha using Delta an, I, antenna? I have, yep. I'm going to be using an Alpha Delta. If you do, you look right on the top of the Alpha Delta that you got. You've got that ground strap or fuse right on the top of it for the static bleed yeah okay there's right on the top of them and lots of the times people say the antenna doesn't work and go like that and that's because it's already had a smack <laughs> and that fuse <laughs> is shorted out and then you're oh, on, on, then, on that's right on top open. of the uh, where the it's right, coax it's, right, it's where, right in the block right on the top where your coax goes up the tower or whatever the feed okay that's your feed line and then you've got your radiators, okay? And in that little block on the top of that is one of those uh, lightning arresters, eh? You catch that or a big smack. And if it blows, and all of a sudden you say, my antenna is not working anymore and go like that, you know, better have a look there. Make it so there, you can drop it Dennis back down and have it. a look so at that, it. That, so that, that, that has part, one right there. That, that part can be replaced? Oh, yes, okay. that's replaceable, yeah. They, so where, and, where are you Alpha showing Delta the block supplies. now? What are we looking at here? Dennis? That's the center of the antenna. That's where the coax connects. Okay, yeah, but where is this, uh, yeah. Doug, where are you saying that? It's right oh, in the baby. block, which connects the coax as you go. Coax goes up, connects into that little block. It's kind of like what uh, Vic was holding up, eh? Yes, it's okay. very similar. And then your radiator lines go out, eh, okay, for your yeah. dipole. Yes. And in that block is one of those fuses, eh, that are lightning. Well, you can't, okay, lightning you, can't, you can't see that fuse then. You've got to change the whole block if it blows. No, you don't change the block. You can change the fuse, but you got to be able to drop it back down where you can get at it again. Eh? Well, where's uh, the fuse in the block, Dennis? Is not, Dennis, show us the, where the fuse is in that block. Okay, here. This is a spare one. Yeah, right. where's the fuse? The fuse? It's yeah. gone. It's what do you gone. mean it's gone? Blue. He took it out. <laughs> I took it out because I didn't have a spare one. But this is just... This where, is would not, the, where would the fuse across, be? goes across right those two terminals there. Right there, right can you see? Between you see his fingers. The, you see okay. the two screws? Oh, people, just a oh, okay. One okay. talking at a time, because we're not seeing, everybody's talking over one another. Let Dennis talk so his screen will become large and let him explain, thank you. Go ahead, Dennis. Okay, okay. now you see the two screws here? Can you see those? Yes. yes. Okay, now those two screws, there was a, a fuse in between here, like an air fuse or whatever they call those fuses. And what happened is, this is my a spare one. The, I have a, a good one up on the tower right now, but uh, I didn't get a spare fuse. So when I'll get a spare fuse, I'll put it back in. The antenna still works without this fuse, but with this fuse, it'll protect the lightning strike. Okay, me. now if the fl if fuse blew and you're stuck, you can just put a jumper in there then? No, no you no. wouldn't do that. It'll no, still no. work. Yeah, it still works without it. It still works without it. But like no. Rusty and uh, Al and Vic was saying, it's a protector. If the lightning hits my uh, my dipole, okay, my uh, X, uh, whatever it is there, the alpha, DXCC, if it hits, yeah. okay, this will dissipate, this fuse will dissipate a lot of the uh, energy coming to the it's house. Not, it's not it's exactly a, it's like a traditional, gap. right, and it's not exactly it's like a gap. traditional fuse. Yeah, it, acts more like, it, it acts more like an MOV. It's open all the time until it activates and then it shorts. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. There's the front, like your, your, your DXCC, your connectors, your wires will connect to this here. Your verticals, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, not vertical. Your uh, dipole. So, and then your antennas. Your here's your connector here, but on the other side, that's where your your fuse will go. Not a fuse, but your uh, what do you call those things? Uh, uh, air gap. Yeah. Air gap. Gas discharge tube. Gas discharge yeah. tube. Yeah. Yeah. Next time I go to Radio Shack, I'll probably buy a spare one there, but uh, we'll see what happens. Radio world. Say, radio, radio Shack? No, Radio, radio World. World. Radio World, okay. I was going to say, where's Radio Shack? <laughs> <laughs> going to Daytona. 
to, there's still to a few of them in uh in the states i think yeah yeah you might hit one when you go to dayton there <laughs> yeah. uh but anyways that's what it is claude that's uh that's there's a spare that's where it goes that fuse there that uh, yeah. air gap thing i'm glad you talked about that because i didn't realize that was on uh, those uh different uh, dipole fittings yeah that's what it is. You'll see the specs on some antennas, uh, a lightning protection. It'll say DC grounded, and basically that's what it means. Yeah. And those, uh, what you see, those two screws, that's where your, in, your verticals, your uh, dipole is connected to. Uh, okay, now, see those bolts? Like that? Yeah. Wow. That's your screws there in between. But if, if if it blows, I mean, you take it out, the antenna still works. It's just you won't have the protection that it's supposed to have. That's why they put that there. So you just uh, went to, to the Alpha Delta and uh, you ordered uh, an extra? I didn't yet. No, not yet. I didn't do that. Is but there some still... kind of an indication on those things as, as to if they're blown or not? Like, can you tell by looking at them if they're open or do you actually have to take it out and test it? Can Mine you test black. it? Can you yeah. test oh, it? Yeah. Yeah. Can you yeah. can you test it with an ohm meter or like a Well, your first tester? your first indication would be an SWR mismatch. Well, no, 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 you wouldn't. If it's no, going to grab no, one side no, or the other. No. Oh, no. oh, with it in there, I guess. Yeah. 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 And then you take it out, you're still functional, right? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, that's what happens, right? Yeah. 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 So your antenna will quit working until you remove the protection device, and then it will. Yeah. Do anyway, those things come with the G5 RV? Do they come with the G5 RV antennas? This one here came with my DXCC, Alpha Delta DXCC, the fan dipole. Probably makes sense, you know, whoever makes the antenna can uh, elect to put something like that on it or not. The, the Comet GP9 has one in it as well. Oh. Because <clears throat> I saw that when I bought my GP9 and it has lightning protection. What about the GB6? Does anybody know anything about that one? I didn't look at that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Luke has his hand up. I was just gonna relate a short story. Um, I lived in a location one time where somebody came to see me. He had a problem with his TV antenna. Um, <laughs> he had about 75 feet of uh, coax buried under the ground and he put his TV antenna up in a tree. Well, it didn't take all that long that his TV antenna got hit by lightning and it blew the uh, cable right out of the ground. <laughs> he, he had the cable buried in the ground, thankfully for him. Uh, nothing burnt, his TV was still good and everything. So moral of the story is if buy yourself direct burial cable and uh, bury the sucker as far as you can to, to uh, protect your, your house. That, that is one, also. that's one nice thing about uh, the hydro, uh, you know, in most neighborhoods around here, the hydro doesn't come, it's not overhead, it's buried in the ground. You know, you got a pole in the yard or close to the yard, then it goes underground and then it comes up to your place. So. If that pole gets hit by lightning, hopefully lightning's already found found ground and it's not gonna go through your house to find ground, so. Yeah. yeah. What I did when I first put my tower up here, um, I had some heliacs to come down with my uh, dual band antenna, uh, my vertical up there. And so what I did is I, uh, I stripped some of the um, uh, covering off of the, uh, Heliax at the bottom, and I put a strap onto the uh, ground rods because I grounded my tower with a couple of ground rods. So I've never had a problem with that. It's on the outside. It's the, the sheathing on the outside that's grounded, but that seems to have worked quite well. I got, I got, I have a little story to tell you. Um, Way back when I was in the CB land, I had the tower, same tower, and I had a, um, one of these Antron 99 antennas up there. 
It looks almost like the GP9. Anyways, um, my neighbor across the street, uh, they were out and it was a really damp day, cloudy, damp day and that. She called me and she said, Dennis, um, I don't know if you know this, but is there supposed to be little sparks coming out of the tip of your antenna <laughs> way up at the top? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, <laughs> not supposed to be, <laughs> but uh, I, I didn't get any problems with the CD or anything like that. It was well grounded and that, but yeah. actually there was little sparks coming out of the tip. Yeah, you can, well, they, I've been you up can put a the... light bulb, like they make, uh, oh, yeah. you put a little uh, thing at the tip of your antenna and basically, well, you can take a, a handheld radio and key it up and rub it on a fluorescent tube and it will light that fluorescent tube. And they made these little uh, little caps you put on the top of your CB antenna and when you transmit, they glow. So. Yeah, what happens up at the tower site here, let me sh just show you another uh, quick picture here uh, that you can see when these uh, guide wires start rubbing up against there. I've been up there where I've seen sparks coming out of the uh, of the uh, the grounding um, grounding straps or the uh, grounding wires uh, coming out of the uh, thing, it's it's amazing because what happens in the wind? Uh, these uh, things rub, and you can see here's uh, one of the turnbuckles with the wire through it, and you can see where oh, the cable is rubbed right against the, uh, and once it rubs, it'll spark. Like it, if there's static discharge on there, you will see sparks and and stuff. You don't want to put your tongue against it or your <laughs> your uh, your fingers because uh, there's a lot of electricity that is and that's is a coming noise off. Generator. The, yeah, and it's a noise generator on the receivers because your receivers on your repeaters, if they've got a preamp like we've got on RMI, that'll just that rubbing against there just amplifies it so spark gap well, generator transmitter basically you got it rusty yeah. Yeah, that thing was just and it took us a while to figure out where the hell all this noise was coming from and of course the cbc when the, the technicians they don't look for stuff like this right like it's just yeah so anyway just thought i'd share share that with you but uh all kinds of noise that can be generated. So, you know what? Uh, do your best, ground whatever you can, and uh, pray for uh, no lightning. So I was going to say pray, and you, then say a little prayer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But no, that was great, Vic. Thank you so much yeah. for that. Uh, That's you know, awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Vic. That was a great presentation. It was very yeah. good. Thank you. You're awesome. welcome. Yeah. It, it sparked a lot of interest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I saw what you did. Yeah. Did. yeah. Oh, Believe me, it was he was very waiting all through the presentation yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. That's but a good all, one. You got you all charged up. Yeah, I got a charge out of that. Yeah. <laughs> it was a real electrifying presentation. We yeah. appreciate I'm glad it. you didn't mind it. It was, uh, it was it's always interesting to see what other what other stories people have of sharing the whole experience of what you've experienced and what others have kind of gives you a better uh, context to look at at uh, what could happen to you too so anyway it's entertaining too absolutely yeah. and that's why <laughs> and anybody on here if you've got something like that that you've done before or you have some knowledge share it with us because i'm always looking for people to do presentations. The so question has really, just yeah. arisen in my mind. Uh, mm -hmm. If I am in the vicinity of ball lightning, uh, what kind of bat should I be using? <laughs> <laughs> Not okay. you, you get one of those little uh, electrified uh, tennis rackets, you know, for bug zappers. You know, I have that, a, that would work very well. I have <laughs> another question here, guys. I'm yeah. going to be putting up uh, like... Um, two small towers, they're separate, eh? should the, um, I tie the two towers together with a ground or have separate grounds? Ooh. No, 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 separate grounds. Separate? Separate grounds, do not tie them together, no. Oh. And another, you added a little tip. On my, I got those little green switches, eh, that you, you get, you know, for switching antennas. Yeah. 
my cable comes in on my antenna and I've got those, uh, MFJ has them, the, the little dummy loads. So when I've got electrical storm or I've got big winds blowing, stuff like that, I switch those switches over to the dummy load. So when the static that's being generated on my dipoles or on my verticals, okay, is actually coming down my coax cable, which would normally come say to my radio, but I've switched the radio off and I've switched it onto dummy loads. And the dummy loads will bleed off any of that static that's being built up on that, okay? And uh, take care of that because it's got somewhere to absorb the energy and stop that. Lightning, as Al said, you get a direct hit with lightning, I don't give a damn what you got on it. It's gonna blow the shit out of everything because <laughs> it, it will. <laughs> it will. Yeah. Doesn't matter yeah. what you do. Did you ever see on the YouTube? You just call up on YouTube and search lightning strike. And it was where there was a little river coming into where the guy's cottage was. Okay. Right. And I guess he used that for his boat. Did you see it, Bob? Oh yeah. You go there. Yeah. That mm -hmm. hit that tree across yep. the little yeah. the side of the creek. Yep. Came down, followed a root out underneath that river, and you'd have thought there was a whale coming out of that water. Yeah. It just it lifted the water, the water right up there three, four feet, oh. boiled the water right yeah. up like that. And it probably went for, I don't know, 20, 30 feet, something like that before it was, I guess, kind of squelched out. Just go like that, ran out of energy, maybe dissipated. Yeah. But I said, when you look at that, and I said, that can happen. I said, you do your best, but it doesn't really matter if you're <laughs> going to get a direct strike on it. I said, that lightning is going to blow the shit out of everything. <laughs> it welcome, won't welcome back, Al. We missed you. I know. Uh, did he freeze? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was um, gone. Vic was the host for a moment. And then it went <laughs> back to Al when Al came so, I, I got a question about the coax. The coax there. We disconnect it. Like everybody's saying, they disconnect their coax on the inside when there's a threat of a lightning strike. Why do we not ground those? Uh, like, you know, plug them into a ground or something? I like used that. to do that in, in Cuba, basically. I had a, uh, because, well, lightning can actually come up through the ground. Too. So basically what, what I used to do, I had, uh, you know, one of these great big fuse holders, you know, it looked like a Frankenstein type thing, you know, and I had that, I had ground rods outside the house and then I had strap come in and go to the bottom of that big fuse holder. And uh, then Basically, if I pulled that fuse, then my my equipment that was tied to ground was no longer tied to that ground. I would take the coax coming in the house and clamp it to the the bottom side of that, so it was connected to the ground. So that that would be the thing to do. Did disconnect it, you know, um, and the the coax that's coming in is connected to the ground. Of course, I didn't have, you know, you're supposed to have like a bulkhead connector where the coax comes in the building and that bulkhead connector is going to be connected to ground. So it, they are connected to ground if you've got it that way. Well, the, the center conductor is not connected to anything. No, but, but you could make it so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, would that be a good, that be a good so, idea though? Well, so if you've got a bulkhead connector, then you, what you want to do is the coax that's inside that's running from the bulkhead connector to your equipment, you'd want to disconnect that. And then the center or the, uh, well, the center conductor is not connected to anything on the bulkhead connector, but the, uh, the, 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 braid, shielding, the, shield. the shield is connected to the ground. That's outside, basically. So you want to keep all the bad stuff outside. And but you're you disconnecting the coax from the bulkhead connector to your equipment you know, so that there's a big gap between the two. Well, it can jump six to eight feet. According well, sure. To the uh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, it can. Like, so uh, like, I, yeah. Every, so everybody I, was saying, you know, Mother Nature, you can't, you can suggest that yeah. she goes one way or another, but if you get a direct hit, all bets are off. Uh, you're screwed. Like what I do, okay, with my antenna connections, everything on the bottom is disconnected. I leave all the coaxes to the switches but I, I take off. So what I would do is I would come and do this. I unscrew this like so. That's a pain. Yeah, it's a pain. Disconnect the single one instead of. Uh... Yeah, so <laughs> disconnect that, disconnect this, 
and I've got them set so that they come down, right? So each one I would disconnect all the way through. Now, there's that gap of about six inches. If the spark comes out here and hits here, so if it comes out here and hits here and goes to my radio, I'm screwed. But if it's static or there's stuff happening, I don't get it. But, you know, I mean, so, I could go and ground each one of these to something. Isn't there a new, that's a, on, on that switch out, isn't there a neutral? A neutral, what do you mean? Well, okay, neutral? you have the, you, the switch itself. You can switch on, one, two, three, four. A common. So, yes. On yeah. most switches, no. the unused ones are, are grounded. On most switches, the unused ones no, are grounded. Yeah. No, but the switch, the, the switch no, can you go to? No, a, a, no, there's only four switches. And okay. each one is used. So there's not a neutral there that you can switch no, to shut everything off. No, on. no. These okay. old Heath kit switches that I bought from Ted Eaton, there's one that there is on the HF. That, yeah. Yeah. So I have one here, calm, on my HF. This yeah. is all the HF ones, right? But on your VHF, UHF stuff, no, there's not. So the common is the input to that switch. Exactly. Normally, that would go to the radio. Yeah, but Al, there's actually do you have a ground the switches switch. grounded. L, do you have no, the actual no. switch bodies grounded? That would be a no. good thing. Well, I could, I could, but you know what? I mean, twenty-eight years of doing it this way, uh, touch wood. Like, and when I got hit directly, I unscrewed it that way, and my radios did not get hit. Now that could have been a fluke with that one. The next lightning hit, yeah, absolutely, blow everything out. But you disconnect the power from your power supplies, or uh, at the. I, at I the flip my switch if um, I'm going away. I don't normally do it during a lightning, so yes, it could come across the AC and affect some of the stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'm just. Wondering. I mean. So I've got so much crap here. It would take me an hour and a half to disconnect everything and then <laughs> yeah. connect it back up every time I hear a little lightning. I and, mean, I take a chance, right? So instead of disconnecting all of the, like if this, you would want to, you could just disconnect the one that goes to the antenna instead of disconnecting all the ones that go from the switch to the radios. Or, you know, if you're using it as an antenna switch or a radio switch, you know, as long as it's disconnected from the outside, you know, this is this is what I do. The antennas come in through the window, and then I've got the switch position going to ground. There you go. I was going to connect my switches together with this copper copper tape, you know, and then run this copper tape to the ground. So I bought like four rolls of this. How thick, said, is the, how, how, he, how thick is the copper tape? Oh, uh, well, it's, it's fairly thin, but it's wide. You know, it's two inches wide. Okay. And, uh, and the, the adhesive is supposed to be conductive, too. I don't know how they do that. Well, that copper that flashing that we've been talking about, is that that's available? It. Well, that's tape, but the copper flashing, the, you know, the thick strip. Shows, the, I don't uh, know where uh, you would buy it, but, yeah, copper check, flashing. Check with you the know, roofer. Really the roofer. The, uh, the it normally wouldn't be copper. Plumbing. Wouldn't be copper uh, on a, on with roofing, would it? It would be more. Yeah, like, it be is. More... You, you can get copper. Okay. Uh, one you can thing, get copper the, uh, braid plumbing... as well. Well, the yeah, yeah the, the wider the better. the better. The wider the better, as Vic was saying. You know, the wider the better. It's they make better, it because you know, all the commercial sites have got it. Okay, so yeah. you'd have to go to a commercial electrical outfit. What's that place on Notre Dame? Dixon Electric, or yeah, I, I Dixon, don't know what right. the Dixon. Yeah, they would probably have it. Go to Nedco too. Their electrical suppliers for all that stuff because we used to do there for the substations and servicing them. Apparently, this oh, stuff will keep snails off of your stuff too. Steam. So we'll see you guys next week, and uh, be careful out there, and don't get hit by lightning and stuff. <laughs> Take care, Janice. Janice. Bye, Callie. Take care. Bye, Callie. Bye. Take care. Bye.